Welcome to the colony. There is a species of wasp located here in Florida that is almost indistinguishable to the executioner wasp. This species is a little concerning when you're talking about sting test. This video is going to be technical and a little touchy. I call it how I see it in the name of education. I guess that's just the definition of a hypothesis. I spelled wrong wrong in the description. Shout out to Nature Nerd Outdoors, you saved me. I have some of the best wildlife subscribers a YouTuber could acquire, considering I'm probably not smarter than a 5th grader. Here's the video that you guys asked for. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and tap that bell icon. Most of you wanted a list of insect stings you will see in the future of this channel. First, wow, that executioner sting video was absolutely amazing. Shout out to Coyote Peterson. What a conclusion to your climb up the Schmidt Pain Sting Index. I'll count my experience as a blessing after testing nearly a dozen different specimens, never having quite as serious of a reaction. Eight of which stings have been released on my channel to the public. It's no secret by now I'm compiling a list of insects. I'm going to put Florida to the test. Here's a few very notable insects that I may regret. The Sphex Anomalous, the Golden Dirt Dauber. Florida's largest wasp, the Eastern Cicada Killer. The Bald Face Hornet. I saw a huge hive and I went too close to inspect. That's a pain I'll never forget. The European Hornet, an invasive species. The Bumblebee is Florida's largest bee species. Been stung firsthand as a kid and I sure that's a sting that needs further documenting. Who could forget about Florida's Bark Scorpion? The bark scorpion in Arizona is potentially a deadly specimen. There is one wasp species I'm very actively seeking. It's a wasp that after I researched it really got me thinking. Here's what one of my subscribers mentioned. Perhaps you could try to find Palesti's major nest. They are so close to Palesti's carnifax that they are almost indistinguishable. That's the executioner wasp. And they reside in Florida. I assure you I've had several requests for this specimen. I have quite a different story. I love Schmidt and his creation, the Sting Pain Index. However, I'm from Florida and there's a lot of gaps. I'm the Florida wildlife guy. I seek the insects where little explanation exists. I receive a sting and try to explain it. This all started when I first saw Coyote begin his climb. He was stung by the cow killer and then so was I. We both were stung by the yellow jacket and oddly, in both instances, we had quite different reactions. He climbed Schmidt's Pain Sting Index, and I'm creating something a little different. I'm starting from scratch with only two exceptions, the Metricus Wasp and the Yellow Jacket. Those are the two specimens on the index. Schmidt called the Metricus Wasp a 3 out of 4. That's the same ranking as the Cow Killer, just a little shorter duration. The Executioner Wasp is Palestis Carnifax, and Palestis Major is almost indistinguishable from it. Little is known about the Executioner Wasp, except for the experience Coyote Peterson presented. But here's what I know about Palestis Major. There are three different active peptides in their venom. That means there are three different possible reactions I can be looking forward to then. Schmidt said he believed that Paper Wasp or Social Wasp develop a more aggressive sting because their need to protect their entire colony. Predators would just come at them a lot harder so they developed an even more intense sting. This is Schmidt's hypothesis. Oddly, a hypothesis Brave Wilderness never mentioned. I guess they're just testing Coyote Peterson's braveness? I like those amazing reactions, but things we're doing are just quite different. I'm testing Schmidt's hypothesis, as well as Florida's dangerous insects. I'm the Florida wildlife guy. This world is full of different species. One day we'll fully understand the art of sting. As you all know, I've been actively seeking Palestis Major, and I've drove miles and miles looking for it. In fact, I actually found a website on Google that allowed me to pinpoint different photographs that were taken of Palestis Major. These are some of the photographs here. I actually was able to track it down to the exact location where these specimens were spotted. I went to the exact pond where Palestis Major was identified before. But I don't think that they were around at this time in the season, a little late in the season for most wasp species. However, I did find this interesting wasp specimen. Now I've already mentioned that wasps are extremely important. 
um, and controlling pest populations, this wasp right here is most notable for controlling the pest population of the June bug, or the June beetle. Now I've never seen this thing of the Scolia dubia tested, and I'm going to go ahead and test that thing today.